Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Well, praise God. It's good to see you all. I am a, uh, Jackie and I are five and a half year Catholics. And to say that this was even on our radar 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I would have called you crazy. This says Tim and Jackie Oglesby. She's a, my silent partner, so she doesn't say a lot, but if I mess up, I hear about it later. So <laughs> pray for me. It would save me a lot of time to tell you the churches that we didn't attend, but here goes. Southern Baptists. I was baptized when I was six years old by Southern Baptist Church, Disciples of Christ, Assemblies of God, Pentecost Holiness. I kept thinking, I'll find the right one yet. Charismatic Community Church that turned into this church, actually started out Pentecost Holiness, became a community church, charismatic, and ended up being a charismatic Anglican church of all things. And then this must look familiar to you all. Praise God. Oh, what a tremendous journey. Finally to become Roman Catholic, to come home. I was the second of four kids. Which one of those up there looks the honoriest to you? The one on the right? <laughs> yeah, she's honoring. <laughs> That one. Yeah. And I love this picture. Yeah. That's about how old I was when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And it was a very real thing to me throughout my entire childhood. <clears throat> Basically grew up in mostly small towns in Missouri, Nebraska, and Kansas. We were church-going people from the get-go, and I always loved going to Sunday school in church with my family. That's something we just did. Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we were in church. As a young kid, I remember the fiery sermons from the Southern Baptist Church and the pastor at the end of every sermon would invite us to come down in front and give our hearts to Jesus. How many know about altar calls? Yeah, you know what those are. The funny thing is, most of those churches don't have altars. Isn't that interesting? Try and ask him sometime, why do you have altar calls when you don't have an altar? Get into a very interesting discussion. <laughs> One Sunday, when I was about six years old, my heart was just pounding because I knew Jesus was real and I knew I wanted him in my life, even at six, six and a half years old. So I stepped out of a pew and I handed up the aisle to tell Pastor Stan that I want to give my heart to Jesus. And I did that. And I'll never forget it. Then we moved to Nebraska in my middle school years. Yes, I'm a Husker. Pray for me. <laughs> Small town, little town between Omaha and Lincoln, Ashland, Nebraska. They didn't have a Baptist church, so we ended up going to the first Christian church, Disciples of Christ Church. Very active. We did a lot of stuff in church. Uh, that was through my teenage years. I graduated high school. Couldn't wait to go to the University of Nebraska, just 25 miles away. And I loved to sing. That's what I did. I mean, I was in musicals in high school, and I wanted to go be a big fish in a big pond in University of Nebraska. Well, it was a whole different ball game. <laughs> and we got into the Cares Bank movement. I'll get back to this a little bit. We got into the charismatic movement when I was 19 years old. And the charismatic movement in Nebraska was probably a lot like it was in Kansas. There's a lot of Catholic charismatics. In fact, we had a Friday evening prayer meeting and three nuns came from a convent not too far away from us, about 50 miles, and they came every Friday night. And we prayed in and sang into the wee hours of the morning. I'll never forget those wonderful Catholic nuns. And the Catholic Church just celebrated 50 years of Catholic Charismatic. Had a big celebration in Rome last year. And my old pastor went to it. And guess who he took with him? 
the head of the Assemblies of God churches from Springfield, Missouri. And he didn't want to go because he was sure the Pope was not Christian. And my pastor said, oh boy, are you going to be in for a surprise? And they ended up on the head table or on the, the head platform with the Pope. And this Assemblies of God, the head of the Assemblies of God, leaned over only to see the Pope praying in tongues. He said, oh my God, he knows Jesus. <laughs> now, what's very interesting is my old pastor has met with the Pope three times. And I'm a Catholic! <laughs> my, my, my. I haven't figured that out yet. At 19 years old, I decided to go to Oral Roberts University. You know, Tulsa is the spiritual center of the world. You're aware of that, don't you? <laughs> and the big prayer tower, and they had big praying hands, and a lot of charismatic Pentecostal holiness kids went to ORU. And that's meant when I met my, my wife, my first wife, Connie, was in those years. Um, God blessed us and brought us together on that campus. She was from Kansas City. It didn't take long for Connie and I to realize that we really believed we were meant for one another. And we married that following summer. And we moved back to Lincoln, Nebraska so I could finish a teacher's degree. During that time, in the late 1980s, how many remember this stuff? I did not buy life insurance because I was sure Jesus was coming next week. I was serious. There was a little pamphlet that came out. 1988. It came out. 88 reasons why Jesus is coming in 1988. And I was ready. I mean, we, I didn't pack our bags, but we were close. And when it didn't happen in 88, there was another little booklet that came out. 89 reasons why Jesus is coming. <laughs> Seriously. And then he didn't come. And it all started with that book. Tim LaHaye, well, it actually started with a book called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And then it went to the Left Behind series. And everybody thought we were going to be raptured out of here. And it wasn't until I became Catholic that I realized that whole rapture theology is only 200 years old. Did you know that? Well, I can tell you none of my folks knew it. And we were very confused. So, guess what I did when he didn't come in 89? And then the guy said he'd come in 2000. I finally said, you know, I think I'm going to call my life insurance agent and buy some life insurance, which is exactly what I did. We were so caught up in that time frame, we knew Jesus was coming any day. And it was at that very time, at 33 years old, that Connie was diagnosed with advanced cancer. And our world exploded into chaos. We had young kids. I had a, the next five years were some of the most difficult in our lives. God sent a young pastor and his wife into our lives who loved us and helped us battle this life-threatening disease. The fight intensified in the fifth year. Connie had been free of cancer three times and we couldn't, we couldn't shake it the third time. And she passed away at 38 years old. And my kids were two years old, or excuse me, six years old and 10 years old at that time. Difficult difficult time and then <clears throat> I can remember she died on uh, February 15th and the day before I gave her my last Valentine's card and the next day she was in heaven There's some very lonely days for the kids and I, gradually I resumed teaching a discipleship class at our church, leading the worship. And I began to notice, after several months, a year and a half, 
I began to notice this pretty lady all by herself in the back row. And I found out that her husband, Walter, had been killed in a car accident about the same time as Connie had passed away. And we visited in church several times. And over time, we realized that both of us were hurting and maybe it would be a good thing to, for us to get together. Then came the evening when Jan I could take you to the booth in Hutchinson, in the village inn, where we had pie and coffee, and we cried, and we laughed, and we realized that God was raising us up out of the ashes and healing our lives in an incredible way. And I am so thankful that God brought Jackie into our lives. Now, I give all the credit for God putting our families together, but fried chicken had something to do with it. <laughs> I knew she was a good cook, and she asked us up on Labor Day to her house, and that was an amazing time. <clears throat> And uh, I met her, her kids were a little bit older. Sarah was 15 and Luke was uh, in college at the University of uh, at Kansas State. And uh, God just did something so special. I'll never forget this. Here's my little gal, Chrissy. And here we're having chicken and I'm thinking, you know, I don't think I can live in this house. I just don't think I could. You know those things that go through your mind. I mean, I'm thinking, how's God doing this? And you think through those things, and they're crazy thoughts. But they come to you. And then I watched Chrissy, and she found a bunch of children's books. And she took Jackie by the hand and took her over to a place and sat her on the floor. And she settled into her lap. And I watched her begin to read it. And that's what I was thinking. Hey, Lord Jesus, I can see exactly what you're <laughs> and so we have just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary last December 26th we've been married 25 years and God put that Brady Bunch together and it wasn't too easy but we did it and we live on a 13 acres outside of Bueller, Kansas we call it the Oval Rosa <laughs> no one else calls it that but we do and it's been a wonderful place for us to live all these 25 years. Not long after we were married, Jackie and I attended a seminar. And it was taught by an Anglican priest, charismatic, who believed what he, he called. He kept saying, I believe in the real presence of Jesus. <laughs> I kept saying, what? What do you believe in? He said, I believe in the real presence of Jesus. In something he kept saying, it was the Eucharist. We had no idea what that was. Never heard that term. It was in Texo, down on the lake. We had a seminar down there for the whole weekend. And the whole thing was, I'm going to take you into the upper room and I'm going to show you what happened that night because Jesus transformed the Passover into the Eucharist. Oh my heavens. We got so excited about that. We went back to our pastor and said, Pastor, we got to start doing this meal. He said, what meal are you talking about? I said, the meal. And he said, what meal are you talking about? I said, you know, the Eucharist thing. He said, where have you been? <laughs> I said, we, we went to a, the meal. He said, I think I know what you're talking about. I used to be Lutheran. He said, you're talking about communion. You're talking about Holy Communion, aren't you? And I said, yes. He said, okay, we'll do it maybe once a month, and that'll be good. Well, that wasn't good. That wasn't enough. We began to realize and began to truly believe that God was, in fact, restoring something to our church that had been gone for a long, long time. We didn't know why. We didn't know how. We just knew that meal was extremely important to our church. And this is a charismatic church in Hutchinson, Kansas. It was called Abundant Life. We changed the name to the Father's House. And we began to do that meal every week. And people say, why are you doing this? 
So we don't know. God is doing something incredible. And we began to pursue this and begin to try and understand what was going on. Well, eventually, we became, we actually became an Anglican church that was charismatic. We began, I was actually ordained as an Anglican priest. I don't think I look too bad. How about you? <laughs> Did a lot of marriages. I mean, I went under the pall. We used the same holy orders as the Catholics. And all these little churches that we had in our network of churches, we were given the freedom to do whatever we wanted with the liturgy. And guess what I did? I started watching EWTN. I watched the Mass, and I'm going, I'm going to do it that way. So if you walk into my little church in Newton, we were on the west side of Newton. A little bitty church that used to be an animal hospital. And that was good because I had some animals in my church. And I had people come in and say, uh, excuse me, are you Catholic? And I said, no, but we love the Catholics. We really do. In fact, I will tell you this story. We had a gal, a single mom. <laughs> this is so cool. She would come to our church on Sunday morning because I had a discipleship class and I taught the Bible, but I also taught church history and I defended the Catholic faith before I was ever Catholic. And she would go to Mass at her church, St. Mary's, every Saturday night, but she'd come to our church for that Bible class and when we had our communion, she'd come up and do this which I finally figured out what that was. <laughs> I would vest every Sunday morning. Toward the end, I actually even tried to do incense. I had a little thing. <laughs> now that I think about it, it's really embarrassing. <laughs> but at that time, it was all we knew, and so I knew God was doing it. And so we started watching the Journey Home program. And so Jack and I, was, I wonder if it's going to be a Mennonite this week. I wonder if it's going to be a Baptist this week. I wonder if it's going to be a Jewish person this week. Wow. I remember when John Paul II died. <laughs> Jackie and I sat in front of that TV and cried. And we didn't know why. We knew the world had lost something precious in that man. We're not Catholic. We're not even close to being Catholic. But we knew something was there. Wow. Okay. So... We start watching the journey home, and I said, you know, I need to find out what Catholics believe. I made a huge mistake. I asked Protestants what a Catholics believe. How many know that's stupid? Because <laughs> you're going to hear every wild, crazy, cultish kind of thing. And I did. So I said, no, we're not going to do that. And I was still a lay pastor over in that little new church. I said, we're going to. We're going to slink, slink into Wichita. And we're going to buy us one of these things called the Catechism again. I said, I want to go into that Catholic church, or that Catholic bookstore incognito. <laughs> and I bought me a Catechism of the Catholic Church, and I began to read what Catholics believe. And ten pages in, I began to cry. I said, this is... Jackie, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. This is what they believe. It wasn't anything like what the Protestants said. Nothing. Kept watching the journey home. Kept reading the catechism. And then I started to talk to my folks at the Father's house and say, I love you guys, but I can tell you where our trajectory is going. And I want to know how many of you are going with us. And I got no hands. None. But we kept going that direction. 
How many know Father Ed and Why? <laughs> we, Jackie actually got a hold of him by mistake. He was the wrong priest. And so we said, well, let's just go with it. So we showed up at Resurrection Church down by the Spiritual Life Center, and we, again, let's go down in the basement so nobody can see us. So we went down with Father Klein, and we told him our stories up to this point because we wanted to start our CIA, and his jaw dropped. He said, say that again? How, how did you get here? And, he's, and he was really shocked by all that. And about six months into him teaching us all the stuff in RCIA, every Wednesday night, down in the base of a resurrection church, for a year we went down there. Six months in, he said, I think you need to go on that journey home program. <laughs> he said, I know Marcus Grota. I said, no, you don't know Marcus Grota. He said, yes, he said, I, used, I actually was a brother down there years ago. I know all those guys. I said, well, that's interesting, and that's crazy. We'll never go on that show. That's nuts. So after we got through with RCIA, we decided we're coming into the church. I am now, I've had a 29 and a half year career with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I'm retiring. It's a good time for me to walk into the office of my pastor and resign every one of the offices I've had. Toughest day of my life. I hurt people that I love dearly. They were not happy. But we did it. And I walked out of there six years ago. Six years ago. We went down <laughs> again. I'm saying, well, let's go down to that family Catholic thing they do down there in the century, too. Nobody will know who we are. Nobody. <laughs> I walk in the front door, and some Catholic goes, oh, my God, it's Tim O'Gloin. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lady that we knew that recognized us right off. Well, we weren't Catholic yet. The first Mass we ever went to was at the family Catholic conference. And Marcus Grodi sat right here. We met him. And we shared our journey up to that point. And, I, and we're in this wine bar just having a glass of wine, which Baptists never do, by the way. <laughs> having a glass of wine with him. And also Steve Ray. Or not, yes, Steve Ray. Yeah, and uh, the Donut Man. What's his name? The Donut Man. The Donut Man. <laughs> that, thank you, Pete. He was there. And we had the best time, and I'm sitting there thinking, wouldn't it be nuts if we had been on the Journey Home, pro home Program one day? Well, yeah, I probably should have put that on, shouldn't I? Does anybody have trouble hearing me? Okay, good. That's going to stay right there. We came into the church five and a half years ago at Easter. St. Teresa's, uh, Father Nick Volker. There was so much incense you couldn't see the front of the church. <laughs> he was singing the Mass. Yeah. I looked at Jackie and said, we are home. <laughs> and we were home. Beautiful Easter. Three months in, I had a girl come up and say, Hey, if you want to be a teacher of the Catholic faith, the Wichita Diocese will pay for your masters. I said, say that again? She said, yes, they'll pay for your masters, and the last three credit hours are in Rome. I said, where do I sign up for this? Because I was three months Catholic. I was just dangerous enough at that point. In the next two years, we did an online course. Jackie and I helped me. I hadn't written a paper in 40 years. And for the next two years, we got to study the Catholic faith in a beautiful and a wonderful way through Newman University. And we got to go to Rome to finish the last three credit hours. It was amazing. There's some of our 
our trip. We got to Assisi. Incredible. How many been to Assisi? Yeah, several. We got all done with Assisi there the whole day, and we went back to a cappuccino shop, and we were having a blast. And, and uh, a lot of people did not know Jackie and my, uh, my journey, and so we sat down at the tables, and some guy says, well, why don't you share your journey? How'd you get to be Catholic? I said, okay, strap your seatbelt on, here we go. And within 15 minutes, we're sitting there, all of us, in a CC, in tears, thanking God for what he did for us, in a CC. And some girl says, you ought to go on that journey home program. <laughs> Then Curcio. And I met a big teddy bear by the name of Mark Weeby. <laughs> and he said, tell me about your journey into the church. I said, okay, Mark. And we sat down. He said, you ought to go on that journey home program. And he started an email campaign. I mean, he bugged those guys to death. And guess what? Last May, Jackie and I were on the journey home program. Sharing our journey. And I still can't believe what God did for us. It's just almost believed. The grace and the peace and the joy that God has brought us as we journey into the Catholic Church. We love being Catholic. And I defended the Catholics before I became Catholic. So I was pretty good at it by the time I became Catholic. And that girl I talked to you about that used to come to our church on Sunday morning, five years just before we shut down that church, she came to Jackie and I and she said, I want to tell you something. You guys have made me a better Catholic. And I thought to myself, then what are we doing in this church? We need to become Catholic. So we go on the Journey Home program and we had a big pizza party. It was fun because when it when it aired, we had a whole bunch of folks at the parish hall. And we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. So Father Mike Babriar comes to me about two months later and said, you need a website. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, you need a website. So what am I going to do with a website? I don't know how to do a website. He said, you need a website. So I'm driving and I'm thinking one day, what would I call it? I mean, I don't know what domain names are. But I had fun with my adult formation classes. We started one in St. Teresa. They hadn't had one in a number of years. And then we went up to the Little River because Jackie's brother's up there. And we started an adult formation up there. This is after I got my master's program. And they hadn't had one for a number of years. And we started doing it consistently. In fact, the one in St. Teresa's I call teaching the masses between the masses. Every Sunday morning between the early mass and the late mass is my class. And we get people coming from the early Mass, and we get people that are going to go to the late Mass, and they show up for that class. And it's been going on for two years now. And I thought, what am I going to call this class? I like the idea of some kind of a university. And I thought, how about OFC University? On Fire Catholics University. Well, guess what? That domain name was sitting out there waiting for me, and I bought it. <coughs> And I started my own website, and now I've got all of my classes. I do YouTube. I didn't know how to do YouTubes. And God just put it together slowly and slowly, so all my classes are out. I've got cards out there on the table, on both of those tables. If you want to pick one up, you can go to the website and see what we've got out there. If you haven't seen the Journey Home program we we're on, it's on the, the home page down at the bottom. And so if anybody misses my classes at St. Teresa or up at Little River, they can go on the website, they can download the notes, they can watch the video of our discussion of those notes. It's amazing. And it's the technology that is available today. I mean, look what Bishop Barron is doing on the Internet. Look what Scott Hahn is doing on the Internet. And Father Mike said, you better do that too. So we did. I don't have a big closing except to say this. We have 
no idea where God was taking us. But we finally, finally, re- when I got my Protestant glasses off and I could see, and I put the cap, <laughs> Mike, uh, I forget his last name, Michael, Michael Cumby said this one time. He said, you can't see this until you get Catholic glasses on. They said, well, yeah, they're Catholic glasses. He said, yeah, but they're the originals. <laughs> and they are. And once I got the Protestant glasses off and I could put the Catholic glasses on, oh, my Lord. He really is the body and blood. And the fullness of the faith is in Catholic Church. And don't you let anybody tell you different. And I don't mind telling my Protestant brothers and sisters, you know that Bible you've been thumping me with? Guess where that came from? You can thank the Catholic Church for that Bible. And you know what our passion is now for the rest of our lives, however many years we got left, is to touch as many Catholics as we can and get them on fire about their faith. OFC University, on fire Catholics. De Colores. Praise God.